Hey guys, what is up? Dave here, coming back to you with a new video. This is more like a rage, or I guess not rage, because I'm not going to be like yelling. Well, you know, I might yell. I'm kind of pissed. Um, this is a video about my new car. I recently purchased a 2012 Golf R that has a stage 2 plus tune with a stage 3 clutch. Um, APR performance, exhaust, catback exhaust, actually no, full exhaust, it's like a 1900 exhaust setup, the APR fuel pump, high performance fuel pump, that's $900, like, this car's built well, or I should say it was built well. My gripe is not with the original owner, the original owner's an incredible ni incredibly nice guy, I have actually, I got him on Facebook, I've been talking to him about the car. He's told me how the work was done, when the work was done, what work was done, etc., etc. But as soon as it hit the dealership, as soon as he traded it in, that's when it went downhill. So I've had the car now for two weeks, and I've been promising you guys a video of the car. It's a cool looking car, it's an awesome car. Um, I, I love the thing, it's super fast, faster than anything I've ever owned and just all around fun to drive sounds good everybody that i've taken a ride in the car with has loved the car it's it's my first volkswagen i've never owned one before but i test drove one of these back in 2013 and absolutely loved it so i always wanted to get one and i got a very good deal on this car so every time i've pretty much uh, looked into trying to get one of these cars. They've been over 20 grand at least. And I just didn't have the money for that. So I ended up actually getting this car for $16,050, um, which was 1800 off of, 18 or 1900 off their asking price because they wanted seventeen nine. So I got a pretty good deal. It does have a lot of miles on it. It was daily driven, but it was daily driven by somebody who cared about it rather than, um, somebody who got it to street race and all that shit somebody who actually cared about it it's also one of my first four-door cars uh that's bigger than like a miata <laughs> i know miatas don't have four doors don't crucify me um but if you look at the car there's something oh well now you have my vin number <laughs> well shit whatever uh but there's some weird things so you can see one of the biggest issues in this picture alone so you can see how high the front end is there's this nice gap here this back wheel I don't know if it's recording my mouse I think it is but this back wheel here on the passenger side uh, you can't even fit like a finger in here now here's the problem with that I don't have a picture of the other side because I'm using the dealership photos right now that I saved from before I bought the car. Eventually I'll do a part two to this video and I'll actually show you guys on the car. Um, I'm going to call the dealership tomorrow, that's why I'm not going to put them on blast and say who they are or where I got it and be like, look, this is what I've discovered from the car. I've even talked to the original owner and this is not how it was traded into you. So I'm not putting them on blast on social media, I'm not going to be that guy. But that back wheel is rubbing. It's rubbing on the wheel well, and I have to fix it. Now here's the other thing. These front wheels are higher than the rest of the car. So it actually sits at a weird angle where the back is lower and the front is higher. And the wheel on the passenger side uh, is also a bigger cap. It is close to the same as the front. So all four wheels are actually set to different heights on the coilovers. Moreover, whoever did the tire rotation on this car doesn't know shit because all four tires have a different degree of camber. The back, this, the passenger rear tire is the worst of it. it you can literally see its angle. It's probably five, six degrees. It's ridiculous. Um, the front two are very similar, but you can still kind of see that one is more than the other. And then that back one is, is like tucked. It's fucking perfect for looks it's fucking perfect but you know that's something i've noticed also it has a gfb dv plus diverter valve blow-off valve setup on it which they're very nice blow-off valves very expensive 
they sound good if you want them to sound good i know a lot of people it's very hit or miss in the car community oh you sound like a ricer versus oh dude that sounds good um it's broken broken from the dealership and the original owner again not going to say his name because i want to keep him private he's a 40 some year old guy he was driving it literally for like a small family car and he got he got a good deal on a new car so he traded this in to get the new one because he was in his words just getting too old for this thing uh it's an awesome car but that diverter valve one of the nuts that holds it closed one of the support screws that holds the thing closed and airtight where it actually screws in is broken just spins so there's no compression holding the blow-off valve closed and i think that's where my boost leak is coming from so that's the other problem also this car just randomly shuts off and it's not something you would have known about unless you drove the car for a week first it just randomly shuts off I was sitting at a stoplight today with my AC on. It was on the second lowest setting you can put it on. So it wasn't even like high fan speed or anything. And I had the, I was watching the P3 cars air vent uh, gauge that I have that tells me all the specs of the car. I was watching that and the boost was going crazy. Uh, the boost was going crazy and then I switched it to battery voltage and the battery voltage was like all over the place. Like the alternator wasn't working. Uh, I've seen I've felt the thing bog at random it'll just like suddenly have no power for like half a second and then it comes back to life because it is in gear and the motor is spinning it's not like it's seizing though it's like jittery like oh you have 300 horsepower at the moment but suddenly here's 98 it just the dealership I feel like ruined this car they had basic technicians touch this thing that are what are called express techs is what Volkswagen calls them. I think other dealerships call them that too. I used to work for Volkswagen. I was an express tech myself. I was learning tire rotations, was learning uh, oil changes, uh, how to check brakes, whole nine yards, how to check the lights, how to do the basic repairs that basically anybody can do in their driveway if they give YouTube a look. Um, but I was getting paid to basically give YouTube a look and being taught in person. I feel like they let somebody like that touch this car when they probably shouldn't have because this car is so heavily modified that whoever messed with this thing like basically broke it and I just don't understand how like they didn't notice at the dealership that it was like this because if you get on the gas even a little bit this back end gets so close to the ground that the exhaust almost touches and scrapes and that's even at, that's at half pedal if i give it full pedal i'll hear the exhaust clank off the ground for like a quarter of a second and then it bounces back up so i'm not flooring this thing i've done it once to see what the power felt like since i got it and that's it i have not floored it any other time there's no reason for me to i'm literally driving it to work and driving it home like it's it's a fun car i'll take it to car shows and shit um i take it to a car show that's near me literally every monday and there's a bunch of guys there that have golf gti's golf r's uh there's one guy with a heavily built jetta that's pushing like 850 horsepower without a tune um older turbo jetta not a newer jetta older one from like early 2000s kind of it looks probably like 2006 ish maybe older um because it kind of looks like the fahrenheit edition is how it started and now it's just heavily modified after that but i'm just how can a dealership sell a car like this when you can definitely tell that there's issues with it and these are not issues a lot of these issues yes the visual thing oh you can actually see it there is a bigger gap on this side you can kind of see it in this photo i don't know yeah, you can kind of see it in this photo. There's a bigger gap, and then this gap is huge. And then on this wheel, what is gap? Like, there's less tire and everything, and then there's this huge gap. But a lot of this stuff is stuff you wouldn't notice unless you were driving it for a week. Yes, I probably would have noticed the wheels being at different heights at the dealership if I wasn't so excited about even getting the car in the first place. But I wouldn't know about the blow-off valve because I'm not allowed to touch the car with tools before buying it 
I wouldn't know about it randomly shutting off when the radio or AC is on uh, without driving it for a week because it's only happened twice in two weeks. But, I mean, that's still way too high for a car I just bought. I don't want to take it back to them either because they're going to try to spin it to be my fault, more than likely. But, either way, it's them I have to call because I got the car from them. I just, I wanted to vent. I've said I'd make a video about my new car and I haven't <laughs> it's very dirty at the moment I don't want to make a video while it's dirty because it's white it attracts every little speck of dirt but despite all these problems it's an awesome car I'll get an entire part list and I'll leave it in like the first comment on the video or something like that uh, if I can find where I put the part list but there's more there's more done to it than I actually have access to. I only just recently found out it was stage 2 plus and not stage 2. I only recently found out about the blow-off valve being aftermarket, which, well, I shouldn't say I recently found out about it. I found out about it like when I got it home two days later when I opened the hood and really gave it a look over uh, and started like Googling part numbers and part names and stuff because I'm not a... I'm not a car parts guy. I wouldn't know the difference. But I figured that blow-off valve was out aftermarket when I looked at it at the dealership. But, uh, yeah, it's just... I'm kind of pissed. But it is what it is. I can't really help it. I just... I kind of wanted to vent and rage. Let me know your horror stories in the comments below about buying a car. I got a million of them if you guys want to hear more stories about my life i know i started doing stuff like oh hey this is how i got fired from office max or why i quit working at cpr cell phone repair i did videos like that and they did kind of well so i think some of you guys are interested in some more personal funny stories of mine so i'm definitely willing to make those videos I just got to figure out like how and record some random gameplay so you guys aren't bored looking at a picture of a car on the screen. <laughs> but we'll figure that out. Uh, I know you guys want Racing Rivals and 1320 Legends updates. Join the Discord, which the link is down below, and you will actually see there has been an update posted for 1320 Legends. You mother... There has been an update posted from the guy who's actually working on it with me. And it's it, in the works. There are things that are working. Uh, it's just this is the first update. It's very early. This is going to probably take a very long time to work on and get actually working. Um, I'm not going to say who because I don't want to like get them in trouble. But I did talk to somebody heavily about challenge last night and heard that it hasn't really changed since like may and that there's pretty much nobody really racing or even on the discord anymore so uh that's awesome but other than that yeah there's updates for legends i'll have updates sometime eventually soon for racing rivals and we'll go from there so i hope you guys have a nice night evening morning day Whatever freaking time it is, I don't know. Whenever you watch this garbage heap of a video, <laughs> I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out.